Have you heard that it's a seller's market in 2021 and you are a homeowner who thinks this is the best time for me to sell my house? Then you need to stick around and hear my five tips for selling your house for the most money in a seller's market. Christy on the Crystal Coast and welcome back to my channel. I'm glad to have you here. Today I wanted to talk about the fact that we are in a very strong seller's market pretty much across the country but definitely down here on the coast as well. We're currently running with about two months of inventory which just means that given the amount of houses that are for sale right now and the amount of people who want to buy those houses, we would run out conceivably in two months if we were to not get any more homes for sale. Now, what is considered a moderate market is usually when we have somewhere between five and six months of inventory on the market. And we haven't seen that for a while, not across the board. And most of the country is experiencing the same type of market that we are. Now, if you don't know my history, I have recently come back to my hometown from Portland, Oregon, where I was a real estate agent in Portland for almost 18 years. And over the last eight to 10 years that I was in Portland, we experienced very strong sellers markets. So I have a bit of history of working with sellers in these sellers markets in order to help you get the most return on your investment for your property meaning we wanna get you the best price that you can. And there are some tricks to do that. I know it can be very tempting to just want to do a for sale by owner and stick a sign in your yard and hope that people will come. Unfortunately, with the way that the real estate market works these days, that just doesn't work anymore. Everything is online. And the first place that buyers go before they start looking at homes especially in person and especially during COVID is going to be on the internet. It is really important for you to have a strong listing strategy when you are going into selling your house, especially if you want to get top dollar for it. Now, of course I'm an agent and I'm going to encourage you that you want to work with an agent because we know what we're doing. <laughs> it's what we do all the time. And if you haven't sold a house in 20 years, you might not exactly know what you need to do in order to get the most money for your house. And that's where we come in. I would encourage you to find full service agents to help you with listing your house. I know there are other options out there, but if you have someone who can help you all the way from zero to 60 through the process, it's going to be a much more streamlined process for you. And ultimately you will probably end up with a much larger amount in your pocket. So let's get started with my five tips on how you can sell your house in a seller's market and get the most money for it. Number one, don't skimp on your marketing. I know it's gonna be tempting to say, well, everybody out there is just looking to buy something, so I don't really need to do anything. Not true. Pictures are still very, very important. They're the first things that buyers look at when they are going to buy a house these days. So you still wanna make sure that whatever agent you are working with gets you the best professional pictures that you can have and the most information on your house online because that is what is going to draw your buyers in. So make sure you have those professional pictures done and if possible, a floor plan. All the information that you can give the buyer in advance is very helpful, especially right now when it's a little complicated to go and show houses due to the restraints because of COVID. My second tip is to make sure that your house is clean. Now, I know this sounds like, well, duh, but you would be surprised. There are a lot of people out there who just don't want to bother cleaning 
or organizing their house before they put it on the market because it seems like too much trouble. Even if you pay somebody to have your house deep cleaned, it is well worth the 200 to 300 dollars to have a deep deep cleaning done on your house before you have your pictures made and your buyers come through. Because if you have a dirty house, it's really hard for the buyers to look past the cosmetics of the dirt or clutter to see what the bones of the house really look like. The best way to showcase your house is to make sure it is very clean, there's not any clutter, and that it's preferably staged. When you're working with a full service agent, we will usually come in and help you make a list of things that need to happen to the house before we put it on the market. Um, and some of those will be cleaning and decluttering. We can also engage the services of a stager who can come in and help give you advice on where to place furniture or other items to really make your house shine and show off its best assets to the buyers when they come through or when they see the pictures. It's worth just a little bit of upfront investment to make sure that your house can look the best that it can. So you don't have people knocking off uh, the price tag in their head because the house looks dirty or cluttered. Now my third tip is to avoid overpricing. I know it can be really tempting to put a make me move price tag on your house. And perhaps that's the situation you're in, that you will literally do not need to move unless somebody pays you this exorbitant price. And that's great. If that's your circumstance, then by all means, go for it. But if you're really truly looking to make a move and you want to either buy another house or you're moving somewhere else or whatever the reasons are, you're ready to upgrade, it is really good to have a pricing strategy in place before you list the property. What I usually encourage my clients to do is we will look at their market analysis, what price range we think the house should sell for, and we'll look at the very, very recent comps to see what things are selling for, if they are selling for above the list price, or if they're selling for right around the list price, or even if they're selling below the list price, and what is really going on in that particular market, because every neighborhood has their own little market that you need to address. Ideally, you wanna price your home just a little under the maximum sell price that you think you can get for that house. Now, there's gonna be a little controversy about encouraging bidding wars and such. But I think that a little healthy market competition is good for you as the seller, because the more people that you have interested in your house, the more you are going to get out of your investment. If you do get a bidding war, the idea is to not really get more than like three or four offers on your house at one time. If you get 20 to 25 offers on your house, you've probably priced it too low and you may not be getting the maximum that you could have gotten out of your house. I would encourage to price it just a little below what the highest end would be and let the market drive that price for you. We are long past the days of where you would price your house and let it sit and then wait for people to offer under and then negotiate with them to come back up. I mean, and, and that still does happen, but to get the most value out of your property, it's best to let the market drive your price up and not start from too high of a price. Now, speaking about multiple offers, that rolls us right in to my fourth tip. And that is, that the highest offer may not always be your best offer. When you're working with an experienced agent, they will know to look at all of the offers to be able to figure out what are some of the red flags that might pop up in those offers, might down the road cost you time and money. Look at what are the terms? How are they getting their loan? Is it cash? How long do they want until they close? How much money are they willing to give in upfront for due diligence or earnest money? 
what are some of the other contingencies? Do they need to sell a house in order to buy your house? Can you take all of those considerations into play when you are making your decision about what offer might be the best? And again, the highest offer may not be your best offer. It's also really good to have an agent who can call the mortgage brokers that the buyers are getting their loans from. It's good to know how qualified the buyers really are, especially in a multiple offer situation, because you don't want any hiccups to come along the line when they're getting a loan that could end up making your sale fall apart. Because the last thing you want to do is bring your house back to market after it has been pending for a while. And that leads me to my fifth and final tip for selling your house in a seller's market. Tip number five is to always get a backup offer. When things are moving as fast as they do during a seller's market, it can get a little crazy with the offers. And you might end up getting someone whose offer you accept and they get cold feet or something happens with their loan, or the house doesn't appraise for what they wanted to offer for it, and you're having to go back and forth on negotiations for that. Whatever the reason, it is always, always, always in your best interest, if you have multiple offers, to see if one or more of the offers that came in would be willing to be a backup offer. All this means is that the backup offer people can still go out and look for another house and they may actually put an offer in on another house and withdraw their backup offer. But in the meantime, it's nice to know that you have something that backs up that original offer should something happen during the transaction. It's just a safety net. And I'm all about safety nets and trying to avoid any issues with the transaction that we can ahead of time being very proactive as opposed to ending up having to be reactive and scramble for another offer or having to put your house back on the market. Because unfortunately in people's minds, when they see a house come back on the market, for whatever reason, they will always think that there's a little bit of taint to that house, that something was wrong and now why is it back on the market? even if it had nothing to do with the house and it only had to do with the buyers, you end up losing money when the house has to come back on the market. And there you have it, my five tips on how to sell your house in a seller's market and get the most return on your investment. Let me know what your favorite tip is or if you have questions about any of these tips. I'd love to hear in the comments below. If you have a house that you are thinking of selling in Eastern North Carolina this year, message me. I'd love to chat and see if I can help you out. I hope you enjoyed this video. If this is your first time here and you'd like to hear more information on real estate in Eastern North Carolina or life on the beach or some just general tips for homeowners, hit that subscribe button below and I'd love to welcome you to my YouTube family. Have a great day and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.